Bro, you know it's a fine city fans, <laughs> yeah? You've got to type in Manchester, change your location <laughs> on Twitter. Like, you have to change your location because they're not in London. Yeah. They're not. Pep's Anfield record. <laughs> He only has one win at yeah, Anfield, yeah. and that was during lockdown. No fans. Mm -hmm. I think it's between us and City, although Liverpool mm. top because of their injuries. I think they'll fall. Yes, people, and welcome back to Inside Scoop. You know where it is. It's myself, Culture Cams, and we are here today, of course, with my co-host, HP, like the source, Harry Pinero. But as we always say, we say we're going to get some guests in the building. Uh -huh. And today we got somebody that's kind of from a different walks of life. Yes. Sir. You know what I mean? A different type of content world, but he still knows ball. Mm. And that's mm. Mr. Fred Santana from 90s, baby. Let's give him a round of applause, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks yeah. for having me. Thanks for having me. What are you telling me, bro? Let's Listen, go. do you, obviously, I know probably people on your podcast know, but to this world, mm. what team do you support? I'm an Arsenal fan. Yeah, mm -hmm. and life, you're feeling good. The hairline's looking strong. It's stronger yeah. than Everything. ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so crazy? I shared a friend. Well, friend spoke to me what? yesterday, yeah? And I obviously wanted to have him as a guest. You know the first thing he said to me? Mm. Need to get a trim. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Immediately. So, good, good timing, bro. Good timing. These are black magic. Yeah. You know? <laughs> not not these are black magic. So I, I know what these are. Nah, yeah. but it's good to have you on. Firstly, before we get into anything, like, you obviously... Mm. Tell the people that what you do and all that. Uh, I'm a podcaster, one third of the 90s baby show. Been going for a couple of years. Um, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all of that 90s baby show. But me personally, Fred Santana. Mm -hmm. We'll leave yeah, all of these uh, socials in the in the description anyway, so you can go follow that one. He promised me uh, tickets to the live show still, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. He's We're saying going on tour. We're going on tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, obviously, look. Arsenal here, so we're going to talk about the title race as well. Obviously, Manchester City, Liverpool on the weekend. Mm. But let's first talk about Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the overall picture before we get into that. How are you feeling at the moment of this season? And are you feeling more confident at this stage than you were last season? Uh, because you had more points last season. Mm. But it's this, a different team. This stage, yes, because Liverpool got a lot of injuries. Mm. Um, although we're third... It's one point between first, second, and third is in like, it's what, 97, yeah. 96, 95. Almost mess up on the maths. But um, Man City, they don't look as strong. Like, I think a couple months ago, everyone was like, yeah, Man City are just going to go on a 15 unbeaten run game. Mm -hmm. But they don't look like they're winning mad convincingly. Mm. So it's like, at some point, they could slip up, even they got Liverpool next. Um, I think we got a decent run in mm -hmm. where we can win like, nine at least nine of our last 10 games yeah and still the league mm. and goal difference is good i have a feeling like yeah, that's gonna play a serious part in it mm. goal yeah. difference are you so obviously when you speak to arsenal fans obviously we know about how stressed arsenal fans used to be that's basically us right now yeah but has life actually nah, changed has life changed has no life one, changed now? No one has your ever, mental's good. <laughs> no, no one has ever lived like us. Yeah. No, 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 yo. I don't know. These last nah, 10... Nah, nah. No, no. I, I'll, I'll 10... be real. I don't think it was as bad as it's been for United because we've actually gone and won a European trophy. Oh, okay. We've won a League Cup, won an FA Cup. So in terms of everything apart from the Premier mm -hmm. League and the Champions League, we've been able to do, right? Yeah. The times when Arsenal were down mm -hmm. and out, mm -hmm. it was glorious yeah. for man. Like, I never thought I'd see this day mm -hmm. where Arsenal will be challenging for a title. Mm back to back yeah. two seasons right but i think what fred's saying is true i think with this arsenal team yeah it is not it's in their hands so to speak even though they're third mm -hmm. and i say that to say that liverpool and uh, and city have got the more difficult running i think city's next few games are all top seven teams and that is a big indication of how difficult the league is going to be for mm -hmm. them to win but also how easy arsenal can sneak in and do their do their work mm -hmm. they've been scoring freely They've got a, a good synergy in their team. I think even the injuries have been in their favour mm -hmm. as well. And the squad rotation I saw in that Sheffield United win was like, all right, after halftime, we, we can take off mm -hmm. these players and the tempo can still be as high as it was before. So for me, I think Arsenal have got a bit more leg room than they had last season. Mm -hmm. Also, the PTSD of throwing that title away is is is. It's evident. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at Arteta now as a top coach. Yeah, because, he is a top coach. Because yeah. I feel like I said to Fred on the phone yesterday, I was like, that Dubai trip. Yeah. It's that, that, that Salt Bay meat. 
Yeah, yeah, pause. Um, yo. No, yo, yo, I'm just yo. saying. Hey, yo, I'm just saying, yeah. bro. I'm just but, saying. Yeah. but do you feel like though with Arsenal that you've seen um, a difference in the in the way they want it and the hunger, and also how do you find you know their results? How you're killing the games from early morning? I think there hasn't over the years. Yeah, Arsenal might be like two 0 up in like the first 20 minutes and you think, go and be ruthless, go get four or five, like Chelsea used to do. Mm. And they'd just like be winning five and then mm -hmm. you're like, damn, what would it be like to support Chelsea? We'd never mm. do that though. You'd be like, why can't my team do that? Mm. You'd be like, Even when Liverpool were moving mad, you'd be like, why can't my team do that? Mm. So now Arsenal are grabbing fives and sixes, you're like, this is a ruthlessness we ain't seen before. Mm. So I'm like, can we keep it up? And I think we can, with the teams were due to play, <laughs> I think we can like mm. we're, we're even mad and everyone was like yeah we need a nine yeah we need a dip Tony Isaac mm. Valovic whoever they was friend mm. and then Odegaard Saka and Martinelli said no nah, we're good you know yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll score yeah. the goals what do you think the major change has been from obviously that December was mm. absolutely crazy and I <clears throat> went on there and listen if Arsenal go and win the league I'm in huge trouble but mm. I went on there and I said listen Arsenal just forget about the title yeah just think about maybe the Champions League because I thought it was gone mm. you know what I mean and then you guys have gone on this run since what would you think changed no, I think this it is. I think it's Jorginho you know mm. Like, he's been massive still. Yeah. When he was at Chelsea, I never deeped it, but now he's in Arsenal. Mm. I'm seeing this guy and I'm like, the way he controls the game is and he different. He conducts, bro. He's always like, conducting, bro. Yeah. yeah. He's so calm on the ball. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd think, yeah, like, he ain't got the pace or the strength, but he's just football intelligence is, I think that's what the difference is. Mm -hmm. Him and Rice together, we all thought it was going to be Rice and number five. Mm. I don't know if we could say. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can, yeah, you can, you can, can say his name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number five still. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I, you know, like that. <laughs> so then we thought, yeah, that's going to be cold this season. Mm -hmm. But it became, or it's become Jorginho, especially like mm -hmm. in 2024. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. It's given um, Rice more license to get forward. Yeah. And it's just working. Mm -hmm. It's just working. I think their squad depth, though, uh, for me personally, and I hate to say this, but I, again, I'm a football fan, so mm. I love watching Arsenal play. And I always have over the years. Mm. Obviously, even when they were bad, there was moments where you're like... <laughs> yeah, they used to pop ball, they, they can ball. I remember the yeah. goal they scored mm. against Norwich, that yeah, one yeah, touch yeah. with Giroud and, 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 and Wilshere. But I think now, I said this uh, beginning of the season, I said that if Arsenal are going to win the league, it's because they've learned that not always... You don't always have to play beautiful football to win games. Mm. It has to be dogged. It has to be one of those where you're mm. a bit ruthless, like mm. you said, and, and and scrappy. And I think now they've got a, a synergy that is actually potentially going to make them win the league. Yeah, no, I don't think we have great squad depth, you know? Mm. For me, do you know why I say your squad depth mm. is good, yeah? F like, people don't like the fact that I like Trossard more than I like Martinelli, right? Mm. And I think I'm that listening. Martinelli is such a... Um, he will get he will get you chances, yeah. But Trossard is just class. He's a class player to have on that I think side. He, uh, more Good intelligence finisher. because yeah, Martinelli has pace to his advantage, which yeah. he relies on a lot. And Trossard has to be smarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think Trossard is is a great player off the bench. He can start in 100%. the nine position. Yeah. But in terms of like Emil Smith Rowe, who doesn't really have great form right now, great mm -hmm. player, but doesn't have great form. Um. Enketia again doesn't have great form. Reese Nelson doesn't get enough game time, so doesn't mm -hmm. have great form. Um, Fabio Silva, Vieira. Fa Vie Fabio Vieira has yeah. just he got his first you know, sub appearance yeah. in mm -hmm. ages. Again, I think that's a testament form. though to how good that starting eleven is right now. Yeah. But I think during this, we're coming up to the business end of the season yeah. right now, where you have got the Champions League, you know. You, you, Premier League as well, these games are coming thick and fast. Mm. You're going to rely on these players. And yeah. I think with Eddie Nketiah, for example, if he's in a team that is playing well, and let's say Saka scored and Martinelli scored, him getting that, that extra goal, yeah. it just boosts confidence. The yeah. thing is, Havertz is, Havertz is doing well now. Yeah. He's, doing, he's doing well. He's using his role as a nine. I've mm. always thought Havertz is a forward. I don't think this mm -hmm. midfield nah, thing, I've never yeah. really been a fan of it. He's a forward. But then Jesus is back now as well. Mm. So these are the headaches that Arteta is going to want to have. So headaches, with all due okay. respect to to Nketiah, he's third choice now. He's, that's yeah, what he's yeah. going to be. He's going to be third choice now. So uh, Partey, as you mentioned, are coming back. Um, I don't know where Zinchenko is. He's been gone for a while. Mm. But Arsenal players are slowly actually coming back. So Timba, Timber's yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, yeah. Like, like, Timber's probably more good. like defensive yeah. players, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. good to have because 
again, one thing we suffered from, from towards the end of last season was burnout. Yeah. And not having enough squad rotation and we all blamed our tech, like Gif Saka, I think mm. played like, what, 77 games in mm. a row or something like that. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. again, that's, that's where Reese Nelson doesn't get enough. So him starting in a game may not work so well, like mm -hmm. having to rest players when, you know, you've got, uh, we've already played Sheffield, like mm -hmm. someone lower down the table away. But um, I think we've got a good chance mm. of, I mean, to you be know. only two points off, right? Yeah. So that means, look, this weekend, obviously, we've got Man City, Liverpool. Mm. Both can't win. Mm -hmm. So that means Arsenal are going above somebody this weekend. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So this is just shows how the title race is probably going to be for the rest of the season. And then mm. you've got the Etihad game. Mm. When you guys go to the Etihad, I think that is massive. That game is going to be... I think that's be a title decider. In, it, it depends what happens today. I mean, yeah. I mean, so it depends what happens in the City game. If City win both... I think they're gone. Collapse. Do you get what I mean? But if Liverpool pick up a point and then maybe City beat Arsenal, all of a sudden you're back to square one in a way. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's massive. But how do you feel like, obviously, we're talking about the great form that you're on. You scored 30 goals in 2024. We scored 37 goals all season. Yeah. Yeah. So that just shows you, right? But you're on this crazy form. But how does it feel like now kind of, even though you're on this form, you're still in third place. Mm. Do, you, do you kind of get exhausted as a fan seeing your team do all this but still not seeing yourself in first place because I know speaking to Liverpool fans bro they, they are exhausted at having title races with Man City mm. now is that how you kind of are you starting to feel that way Get, well, getting exhausted at being in this current title race or in terms of like you see the form that you're on right you yeah. guys are on great form but you know if you were usually any time any season or whatever you're not competing against the Man City you're not competing against the Liverpool if I'm winning 6 nil, 5 nil, 5 nil, whatever it is my, my team will be sailing at the top of the table mm. but even though you guys have 7 wins in a row you still remain kind of not at the top of the the list does that give you any kind of worry that if if you no, drop these really, teams can still go off we, we didn't start the season so well we was because like Havertz was playing in a different position and yeah. it just wasn't clicking up top we wasn't scoring as not enough we wasn't creating as many chances P teams were playing a low block 10 sometimes 11 men behind the ball set so at the start of the season it didn't look great so mm -hmm. we thought okay we messed up last season and we started bad dropped all expectations this mm -hmm. season and then everyone in you know the papers were saying oh we're gonna do you know well in the Champions League mm -hmm. I didn't really think so we lost our first game or first leg to Porto mm. second game at um, Emirates see, see what happens but like no nah, it's not exhausting it's, mm. it's it's a bit more interesting mm -hmm. this time around yeah uh, you yeah, got another team in there innit? Yeah, Liverpool in there yeah well. less expectation I think Liverpool will fall because of their injuries mm. um, and Man City will be fine so I think it's between us and City although Liverpool mm. are top because of their injuries <laughs> I think they'll fall. You know, a lot of Arsenal fans, to be honest, Liverpool fans are fuming with Arsenal fans yeah. at the moment. Because <laughs> Liverpool fans think that Arsenal fans are dismissing them so much. And they're like, they're, they're like, hold on. You ain't been in title races yeah, like this. Like, yeah, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's Liverpool, funny yeah. to see yeah, that yeah. happen right now in the flesh. Like, they think they're them. bad. They think they're bad. <laughs> you know, like, they they was they were so dead for so long. Like, <laughs> they ain't been in title races like mm. that. Like, they just got here again. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You lot was missing for like, 30 years? Yeah. I think, you, do you know what it is, yeah? They've, like, they've forgotten <laughs> their whole bag. This is crazy. And then it's like, even even in this this period of time where they've been, um, you know, again, it's been the City Pool era, like, as mm. Cam's likes to say, you've only won it once. Mm. So it's like, chill. Yeah. Like, and just do what needs to be done, yeah, innit? Yeah, yeah. I will say one thing, though. Liverpool's injuries this season... It's mad now, innit? ...has made this stage. even more of a tighter race. Mm -hmm. And credit to them, with those injuries, they're still in it. Yeah. I think a full strength Liverpool team is a different conversation because mm. even the resilience they're showing in games where it looks like it could be nil-nil, even the last-minute goal from, from Nunes the other day, that shows me where they're at, but I don't know how long that can be sustainable mm. for. They've been speaking about sustainability and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. We'll see how it goes, man. And what's crazy, because Liverpool, obviously, they're top of the table. They've been there pretty much not all season but they've been mm. they've been doing their thing now like a lot of people rip them off but then you've got Arsenal have won seven in a row but in and amongst this even how you just mentioned that City oh, it's weird with City because they're not playing like vintage City mm. no. but you know in the last 19 games they've won 17 drawn two they are unbeaten in their last 19 games. And, no one knows and, and, and no just, it, no, just no goes over no, your head, in it? Because there's no City fans. <laughs> yeah, 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 So there's yeah, no yeah. one to, to argue us, with To you. give those... those <laughs> bro, you know, to find City fans, yeah, <laughs> you've got to type in Manchester, change your location <laughs> on Twitter. Like, you have to change your location because <laughs> they're not in London. Yeah. They're not... And, and that's... Again, people say, but we're... Man, we're bro, mm. 
they're not a big club yet in terms of that global. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. even when they signed Jack Grealish, mm. there were 16 people there mm. outside. Mm. Like, they don't have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. their fans are either 17 mm. yeah. or, old. Or, or, or 71. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, like or they're five <laughs> and they like Harlands. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, so got the same then, hair then as they've got an mm-hmm. Alnese kit as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's so much an Alnese. like that. This study, I want that one. Oh, like, I'm screwed. Oh, that's funny. That's nah, funny. nah, but nah, it's, it's, it's mad. It just shows the levels, yeah, mm. that obviously we're going to talk about Liverpool and City. It just shows the levels that Klopp and Pep mm. have set to win a league, bro. Yeah. That seven wins in a row can keep you in the same position. That one team's going 20 games pretty much unbeaten and it's going over your head. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And Liverpool, even the way Liverpool have come back this season, I think that's also why everybody's kind of still looking at Liverpool and thinking, nah, surely they're not going to do it because we just saw what they were last year mm. and all of a sudden they're top of the table. But that's a testament to Klopp. Do you know what I mean? And I think... I don't know. I think there's something in the air with Liverpool. I promise it's you. There's, some, farewell there's something in the air, bro. It's there's something in the talk. air. When yeah, they, yeah, when yeah. They, when they didn't lose to Chelsea that game, yeah, in the final, I was like, something's booky, bro. You know, something's in the air, bro. Man United. Bro, but that Liverpool, that Liverpool, us. Liverpool under Klopp are very similar to Man United under Fergie, bro. It's mm. a very similar kind like, of. Even when you feel like it's over, it's not over. Like, yeah. it's Klopp yeah. time. It's yeah. Klopp, they, Klopp they, time. They got that yeah. about them. Oh, and, that was and good. Wow. <laughs> Klopp <laughs> is time. It's crazy. Klopp, Klopp's very smart with when he dropped that news. Like, that was a fantastic time to say, yeah, at the end of the season, I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing. Mm. Every home game is going off mm. from the fans and the players. And then traveling you know, fans, so scan off. I've got a cousin in Sierra Leone that has called me to say, "Can I get him tickets to to the final game?" He's lost his whole soul. Yeah, yeah. They're going for like forty k behind mm-hmm. the bench, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's about twenty. What? Yeah, I've heard it's like twenty k in every aspect yeah. for, for what you. Well, just to let you know, cause it's not happening. But um, yeah. <laughs> on to the next topic, which obviously is the main topic of yes. discussion for today, is City against mm-hmm. Liverpool on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Now, this is been made as a game of the season so far, especially yeah. with what we've been speaking about, about, you know, Arsenal, uh, City and Liverpool, one point behind each other. Um, so, we've done things differently today. This is actually a special episode. We've got yeah. Fred in the building, but we've also got a board. Got a tactic board. Tactic board. Tactics. For the listeners right now, we're going to basically discuss uh, the tactics, how we think the game's going to be won. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is how it's going to be. Obviously, we've got uh, the red... What are these called? Magnets. Magnets. Red guess, magnets, yeah. obviously, for Liverpool and uh, the blue ones for, mm-hmm. for City. Now, I'm going to start off with City first, right? And one player that we've spoken about very, very highly, mm-hmm. which is Phil Foden. Mm. We saw against Manchester United how influential he was in that game, a game in which Kevin Brown was playing in, yeah. a game in which Harlem was playing in, Rodri was playing in, but he was the answer to any question that was thrown his way, mm. right? Do you guys feel like in order for City to really, really take control of this game, Mm -hmm. Phil Foden has to be on form in that game. Most definitely. I think him and Silva, their partnership isn't... The swapping was was (laughs) out out real between them. Like, on on that right-hand side, them two together... um, and then who they coming up against that left back? Uh, what's it? Robin, Robinson's, Robinson's fit now, back. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. back in there. I think then and Trent is injured, mm-hmm. so they have got a youngster on the on the probably right. Bradley, Bradley, yeah. yeah. I think they'll probably look to expose that side. Then I think Doku will get a start, mm-hmm. and they look to expose that yeah, side. But then he's injured at the moment. Yeah. The thing is though, like it, it's all about where you guys think the the game will be won. So I think. I don't actually... I'm, I'm kind of like swaying between who's going to win this. I think it actually might be a draw. Mm-hmm. But you know Man City are always going to trust So Obviously, you've got Kyle, Kyle Walker. Walker, let's say John Stones, mm. Diaz or Akanji, yeah. and you've got Nathan Ake, yeah? yeah? We know Stones is going to come here now, right? Yeah. This is what he, they do now. And they make a back three, and then you've got these two, which is um, KDB. Let's say KDB and Silva, yeah? Mm-hmm. Bernardo Silva. So City obviously are going to play a little box midfield of whatever they call it. You might have Foden there. I think Foden, as you mentioned, Foden... Let me put the mic here. I think Foden and Bernardo, and Bernardo you know what they're saying, they're going to rotate and stuff. But the one thing that now that Man City do is that they use stones. He actually starts now forming, getting up yeah. there, which is absolutely ridiculous. And you <laughs> He saw did that Ga- in the final uh, against Inter Milan as well. Yep. And you saw Carragher talk about it against what he did against Man United, right? But now what we're seeing... 
is because they have so much pressure up here and now KDB just does whatever he wants. KDB goes here. Remember there was a point where Pep would only use KDB on the right-hand side yeah. and he'll just be crossing it. Now KDB goes here, KDB goes wherever because Stones, which is absolutely crazy, but Stones and Bernardo are able to be floating around. But what it does now, yeah, is we know who their key, key man is mm. and it's Rodri, bro. Mm. Do you know how much time and space Rodri has on the ball now? Late runs. It's absolutely... Defensively. It, it, he's, crazy. he's now gone beyond being a, a, just a defensive midfielder yeah. because, bro, when he gets the ball, if you're thinking about these all these guys, you've got Doku who keeps the pitch mad wide, right? You've got all these guys in the midfield. If you've got Rodri, who absolutely is a mad ball player as well, mm. he just got all the time and space. And that's why we see so many of these chipped balls to man that are running in there. Not all often to Harlan because they usually chip it to the winger. They'll try to head it across the box or whatever. So that's why Rodri now is is a goal threat, mm. assist threat, and just in general possession. Extra and in the fence as well. Exactly. And the thing is, that's where I think, yeah, with Liverpool, they might be might struggle there because you're looking at Liverpool's midfield. McAllister is a good player, mm. not necessarily legs per se. He's more of he wants to keep the ball. And you got Endo, who I think will come in because it was Joe Gomez the other day, but I think Endo is fit. Mm. And then they got an option that they got to make there. Is it Gravenberg? Is it, I don't know who they're actually going to go. Mm. Um, or Harvey Elliott has been the one that's been playing. So it's, it's a little tough. bit of a mis mismatch there. So where do you guys think? Obviously, I'm, that's how I think the game can be won for Man City. John Stones and Roger are going to be so key to allowing KDB to be free. But where do you think Liverpool can win the game though? It's tough. Salah's back. Salah's oh, okay. back, but I yeah. don't know how fit he is, match yeah. fit he is for that game yet. I've, I've always felt like where Liverpool's power comes from is the wings, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because they have a goal threat with Nunes. Mm -hmm. And Nunes, as much as he plays as a striker, it's running in, in, between, in, in behind the lines. Mm -hmm. I think that is where, for me, Liverpool can win this game. Because mm -hmm. Nunes, even though he doesn't score as much... Mm -hmm. uh, he's been like, scoring lately. No, I know, but yeah. in terms of the amount of chances yeah, he gets, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's my point. He is the one that can create space by his runs. Mm -hmm. And I know how uh, uh, City like to defend. Whenever mm -hmm. there's a goal threat, they like to follow and clamp that player, mm -hmm. right? He's got quick feet, and I feel like whoever is playing in this mid, mm -hmm. it has to be this. Mm -hmm. This link out here. So if it is Harvey Elliott, mm -hmm. which I don't think it will be in terms of, I don't know what uh, Klopp's going to pick, mm -hmm. but if it is Harvey, whoever's playing in this, in this mm -hmm. role here, they have to have a synergy with, with, mm. with Nunes here because on the wings... Okay, so you mean like, like around like the 10 area you're talking about? Area oh, okay. Just like, because the wings, yeah. Kyle Walker's rapid. Mm -hmm. uh, Nathan Ake is a great defender as well. And, it, and if they get clamped here, it's Nunes. It's yeah. the only goal threat that they're going to have. For me personally, from what I've watched from this season, whenever Nunes gets the ball, he runs into channels. Mm -hmm. He brings players into play. And that's why you've seen Jota's, him and Jota's link up has been incredible mm -hmm. this season. For me, I think if... If Nunes is on form and he's running the defence ragged, mm -hmm. I think that's the only way that they have a, a proper goal threat, depending on Salah. Because mm -hmm. Salah, we know what he does. Mm -hmm. He gets the ball wide. He's got a mad record against Liverpool. He's against City, City as well. Yeah, so if Salah's on form, then we know what Salah does. Yeah. It, it's, it's basically Salah and Nunes. Mm -hmm. That's the only threats that I see. Mm. Uh, personally, I don't know what mm -hmm. you guys They've got think. Luis Diaz as well, yeah. but... He's been... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, yeah he ain't been where And he can he get shot been. out of games really yeah. quickly yeah. as well. And then it's like, that side is... Against existent. the strength and pace of Walker, but mm -hmm. me, I believe in match fixing, <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's going to be one one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's going to be tough without like a, a recognized 10, it's going to be hard to get the ball into Nunes. Like, I just don't see Harvey Elliott yeah. being enough against Vodri and Stones in there, mm. it's just going to get crowded. We saw it against out. United, uh, uh, with you know, the ball to Rashford mm -hmm. or the ball to Garnacho, mm. they swarm the players mm -hmm. and then they, they retrieve the ball so quickly. Mm. Yeah, Nunes is more stronger, and I think he's more uh agile in that way in comparison to Rashford this season, especially. Mm -hmm. So, it's about what they want from from Nunes really. If it's mm -hmm. running in behind, in between the lines, then or, or counter attacking, then I think they've got a chance mm -hmm. because Man United was able to score that one goal. We had two opportunities that we could yeah we finished, yeah that's what I was about that would have been three 0 against a City team that mm -hmm. we just speak, we just spoke really highly about their their strengths. So I think if they play a counter attacking way, that's the best yeah. way that they can win. But that's the thing about City; they give you chances though, mm -hmm. and you got to take them. And the thing is, Salah he's the best probably in the world in the in, well maybe Mbappe in mm -hmm. transition mm -hmm. in just transition football in terms of. You give him a counter opportunity, nine times out of ten, he's going to pick the right pass or he's probably going to score. So when you saw it with Raheem Sterling and Nico Jackson, they actually 
exploited that against Man City. Rashford, all right, it was an absolute screamer, but there was times when Man United got in behind. If he didn't trip against Kyle Walker, mm. you never know what could happen. They went in the other end and scored. Trip. But they, well, you, said, you think he dived? Trip. <laughs> what do you think happened? <laughs> what do you think happened? You think he dived? Didn't you see his laces? <laughs> you didn't think, well, I thought he tripped himself. Trip, yeah. I thought he tripped nah, his ankle, man. Nah, you fell. think he dived? He fell. You think he dived? Yeah, he, uh, he, he went down he too easy. I don't think he dived, but what he did is he felt contact and <laughs> said, I'm going to go on the floor. I think, I think I, what I would say is, I think he tried to buy the, I think he felt a bit of contact. I think he knew his walk up, he's not beating him for pace. Got a little clip by himself and it fell down. I the think thing is, he himself. wasn't sensible. But sometimes when you see a striker running through on goal, they yeah. get their body in front of them. Yes. I think he had a few centimetres that mm -hmm. he, he had an opportunity to get his body in there more. Yeah. So he realised he didn't have the right body position, mm -hmm. felt a touch and went down, but yeah. it wasn't even close to nah. him. Yeah, yeah, it I, I, I agree. I don't, think it was a, I don't think it was a foul or anything. But you, saw him, in more. <laughs> but you saw him get in, it, um, in behind and stuff. Yeah. But one, one battle or... The battle that's going to be interesting as well is going to be Erling Haaland versus Van, Van Dijk and, yeah. and Konate. Yeah. And it's funny because you're probably th everyone's probably thinking it's going to be Van Dijk. But one thing that you do see, let's move away this, right? The Man City one. So one thing that you do see yeah, with um, Liverpool is that they play high themselves. Mm. So Liverpool are like this. I'm going to try and bring that here, yeah. We'll cut these bits out. Idiot. So... One thing that we do see in the game anyway, so I took the Man City ones out, is that when there's a forward here, so let's say it's Erling Haaland, they are probably the best in the league, I think, Man um, Liverpool, at delegating jobs, the two defenders. You always just see Van Dijk just say, all right, I'm just going to step here. Konate is the one that's always yeah. like this, yeah. always. And, but one thing about Konate, sometimes he's a bit too aggressive. Yeah. He, he gives away a lot of early fouls. But this is the way Liverpool sustain pressure because their high line, they've got probably the two most athletic centre-halves in the league and are probably Arsenal probably second to that with Saliba, Saliba and Gabriel. Gabriel. Yeah. That's why these teams suffocate you, bro, mm -hmm. because even if you did manage to spin him, Van Dijk's you've got there for an the absolute cover. An yeah. animal the in, in Van Dijk. So I think we're going to see Konate all over Haaland for that game. And yeah. listen, it's up to Haaland how he's going to play it. Because we know Harlan re not relies on... Well, he does rely on service. Mm. And he doesn't always want to get into the physical battles. We saw at Etihad last season, mm. he just decided to take that assignment on and he destroyed um, Gabriel and, and Holden. He mm. killed them. But he doesn't do that often. And Kanate and Van Dijk are a different proposition. So it's going to be interesting to see that battle. Kanate getting onto him there. But then it matters about, is KDB going to be spinning off? And that's my point. And that's with, what we're going to see, in it? With... with um, Man City is that their creativity surpasses Liverpool's. So even though that this is a great matchup in terms of having two of the, some of the best athletic defenders in the Premier League, mm -hmm. right? The service that Kevin De Bruyne is able to provide, and so is Bernardo and Foden. And Foden's a very jinky player. Mm -hmm. He can find space. We saw the goal that he scored against uh, um, Man United was him just getting the ball, taking a step out, and taking a shot. But I think for me, with K KDB, uh, I think his role. Mm. in this team right now is to find Haaland. That's, yeah. That yeah. is his role. So it's about closing down Kevin De Bruyne and, you, and then this is not a problem because mm -hmm. we've seen it, like you said, Kevin De Bruyne, uh, sorry, um, Haaland doesn't like the physical aspect of the game in terms of, we saw what happened with him and Rudiger. Mm. Rudiger had him in the pocket. It was a, a tough game for him. So if Kanata can do his job and they can close down Kevin De Bruyne, which is a very difficult job mm -hmm. to do, then I think they have more of a chance of sustaining the pressure. Mm. But once this goes past, I know Van Dijk's a great defender, mm -hmm. but Haaland 1v1, it, it doesn't need that much. He yeah. just needs a little bit of space. Yeah. And yeah, Alisson could be in trouble. Or is, is, is it's it not Kelleher? Alisson, it's Kelleher. Kelleher. Yeah, so yeah, Kelleher yeah. could oh. be in trouble as well. Yeah. Because if it was Alisson, I would have said, he, you know, Alisson would be up here. Yeah. You know? yeah Kelleher's but had a good, yeah. a, good, a good season yeah. so far. And that's the thing. Haaland, we've seen it a few times. Bro, In as you mentioned, in transition, if you're running side by side of him and he's at full pace, you're pretty much dead. Like he's so he's gonna go with a V12 engine. <laughs> literally, right? literally. But the problem, the thing about it is that you gotta limit him even being able to turn. Mm -hmm. And I think Kanate and Van Dijk are it's very red good. Red cards at can happen and yellow cards and needs. Kanate gets booked nearly every game, bro. Yeah, yeah. He or every every game I watch Kanate, I'm like, how have you walked away without a booking? Or how you, you're fouling all the time? He stops so many counters. Do you think Liverpool will have this set up like a? A free. Nah. They haven't got the players today for it. Yeah. I don't they, I don't think they'll have the players for it because if Trent was playing, 
they yeah. could have matched Liverpool or they could have matched City, mm. but Trent's not playing and I don't see him making, he's, I mean, Canate is not going to do a John Stones and I don't mm. see him inverting Conor Bradley. I think mm. he'll keep it wide. So, nah, I think they're going to go. So based on what standards. we're saying here, it mm. looks like we feel like Man City, as, as much as you said it will be a mm -hmm. draw, they have more to, to win this game. I think so. You, look at it, you were talking about the injuries, innit? Yeah, mm. so it's a lot. I think Klopp probably plays for a draw until like 75th minute. Mm. And then Liverpool try and get a bit more active depending on the score. Mm. But again, because this isn't Allison, Man City don't often play balls in in these areas mm. for people to run onto. But because it's not Allison, They push very... They push yeah, the yeah, team yeah. as well. I don't so. think they're going to... I think it, if it was Allison, they'll probably squeeze higher to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to stop that ball most definitely coming in. Like City do it like three, two or three times a game, mm. that ball in here or mm. for Haaland to run yeah. into. If it was Allison, he'll sweep that up. So they would have been more cautious. But I don't think Keller's like He's not that sweeper, confident like, yeah, to, like, to come out. So mm. that may mean Liverpool drop Probably back like, yeah. an extra 5'10". Um, I think it's going to be very tough for them to win it because of the injuries. Mm -hmm. If anything, like Salah, how long is he going to play? Yeah, you know, does he have the fitness to 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 you know to be a match winner? Mm -hmm. Are they going to rely on Diaz? Nunes is probably going to miss three or four chances <laughs> that could have like you know won yeah. them the game in the first thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. Frustration sets in. Man City get a hold of the game again. The game at Etihad just was, control was it. basically Man City dominating, mm. and then Trent scored that absolute worldie. So yeah. One thing I'll say about Liverpool, they do know how to sustain pressure and, and, and even if they do concede, it's never the end for them. Mm -hmm. I think it's, again, like we said, it's just about how they control the, the creativity and having less possession than they're mm -hmm. used to as well in a game in which they, you know, they really need to win. Yeah, my, my, my view, I'll say it again, is, is literally that front three, the service that they provide, that they're provided with is very key. Now, Salah, we know 1v1, he's one of the best in the world, but I just think fitness may pay a part yeah. in this. Um, Nunes, like you said, with the chances, will he be on form? Will he be a destruction to 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 John Stones when he's playing in centre back? Mm -hmm. Nathan Ake, he could be on toast because mm -hmm. he didn't look great against Man United, and that mm -hmm. was a, a crap Man United. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I do think City, in my opinion, will win this game. Yeah. Um, but I do think Liverpool do have a chance with the players that they have. They got, they got. But I'm going to read out some of the stats from these two's head to head. So, Man City and Liverpool head to head. Um, Pep has more losses yeah. against Liverpool than he has against any other team. So he's actually won, won seven, lost eight. Mm. And Klopp has more wins over Pep. He's the only manager to, to have this. Klopp has 12 wins. Pep has 11. Mm. And Pep's Anfield record, <laughs> he only has one win at yeah, Anfield. Yeah. And that was during lockdown. No fans. Mm -hmm. And you've seen, I don't know if you lot watched All or Nothing, Man City's All or Nothing, right? That guy is shook of Anfield, bro. Pep hates Anfield, bro. He, you see the way he was talking to his players before Anfield, he's like, this is Anfield. They're fast. They're aggressive. He hates Anfield. So he kind of, when he goes into Anfield games, so what, we, what we're saying, we could be totally wrong. One thing we know is Pep is, you can't predict Pep. We're just trying to. He might do something completely different in this game, bro. Because Anfield brings something else out of Pep. And it hasn't always worked. So it's going to be interesting to see how he goes into it. But judging by these kind of statistics, obviously Liverpool have injuries. Only Jack Grealish is missing for City. But judging from that, that's why I'm giving Liverpool a chance. And that's why I think it's going to be a draw. A, I think it's going to be a draw. Uh, but don't be surprised to see Liverpool win, bro. I'm not. I'm don't not be surprised. I'm, I'm just saying. The only, only thing I'll say is... And I keep saying it, and people are probably going to say, oh, you said this last year, but it's still proved right. When it comes to title deciding games, I've only ever seen Man City lose one. And that was, do you remember when they played Liverpool at Anfield um, in 2014 and Raheem Sterling scored and Coutinho scored? Do you remember that game? Yeah. They still went on win the league, so it didn't really decide the title. But that's the only time they lose. Every time they have title deciders, company scored against us. The um, the game at the Etihad the other day, the game against Liverpool with Sane scored, and they never lose these games. So that's it's, it's an interesting matchup. But it's a it's beautiful a very, balance. Very interesting we're talking matchup. about Anfield, one of the most scariest stadiums ever. Van Dijk's only lost what one game. 
Yeah, Rodri, yeah. unbeaten in his last 59 games, the yeah. longest run in Premier League history. So, so a lot on the a line. record is going to Yeah, yeah. Uh, something's yeah. going. This is to WrestleMania, bro. Something's, something's, going. something's going. But I want to get predictions <laughs> yeah. um, from all of you guys. Starting with you, Fred. What do you reckon the scoreline is going to be? I'm still, I'm, I'm still on a draw. One one. Mm. I'm seeing one one. Yeah, because it's at Anfield. If mm -hmm. it was, if it was. Um, Ayrty had with all these injuries I would have said yeah Liverpool would have got washed and it would have been scary mm -hmm. you don't really see Liverpool lose 4-1 them kind of things so I'm, I'm sticking with 1-1 mm. I'm going to go 2-2 two -two. Yeah. I think it's going to be an exciting game I think it's going to start nervy but once that first goal goes in I think it's just going to open up the game and it depends on who scores it I think Liverpool are going to score the first goal mm. and I think City are going to claw back into the game so I'm going to go 2-2 uh, two -two. what about you? I'm going 2-1 Liverpool Ooh. I'm going rogue. Because cause, cause okay. you know what it is, yeah? The reason why I'm saying 2-1 Liverpool, I've watched Liverpool enough over the years to know that at Anfield, yeah, they are such a scary, scary side. Mm. And once they score and then them fans start singing, yeah, mm -hmm. pressure will start to soak in. When you see Pep on the touchline drinking water and spitting it out, yes. that's for me. That knows I know his head's gone. And when you see your manager behaving like that as a player, so it, it can seep in, it? So <laughs> if Liverpool, for me, if they score the first goal, even if City score, I feel mm -hmm. like they'll score the next one. So for me, I think I'm hoping Liverpool win. And, and as Dude. a Man United fan, you know what? what? I don't want to see. What's Man City. this? I don't want to see Man City do a four peat. Really? Oh, yeah, but you want to see? Well, you want to see Liverpool get I twenty? I believe Arsenal. 20, so I believe, you know we sing bro, twenty you know, times, twenty win times. This. We bro, can't win this. We sing twenty times, twenty times. Man United. Uh, it's now they're going to be saying twenty what, times, okay, twenty times. Liverpool. You know what's so mad? What are we doing to stop this twenty times? Nothing. Yeah, that's what, what are we doing? I'm on your. I'm not had the chance to stop this last season. Y'all could have all joined forces with Arsenal. Instead, even if we join forces, what did you not do? <laughs> instead of, right, instead, right, right, instead right, of supporting it, us, mm. you not let City do it again. Right. It's crazy. No, but nah, you don't want them to have it again. I'm, nah. I'm telling you now, yeah. As a United fan, we are living like a uh, living. It's a nightmare. Like, it's a living nightmare because listen, Liverpool and City were doing their thing, City Pool era, whatever, mm. and we were just like, cool, peak. But you know, we watched Liverpool win the Champions League and then City win the league same season. City won the domestic treble and City and Liverpool won the league. I mean, sorry, Champions League. So you're thinking, okay, wow, it keeps going on, keeps going on, and then. You're already having to pick between who your rivals are. We've all really been supporting City mm. because we, Liverpool is the bigger rival. And then Arsenal come into nice. it. It's, it's a nightmare. And then Arsenal come... Can I just, Arsenal! Can I just say not Chelsea. Arsenal, Arsenal came into it. Arsenal win the league. You know when it was Black Lives Matter mm. and everyone was posting black? And you know that BBM, when yes. something happens, people post black <laughs> on their BBM. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm going into hiding. All you right. might see me hiking in the Himalayas, bro. I'll be out. You know, it ready. Listen, it, it, what it's like? It's like if Nigeria won Afcon, you would have never heard the end of no, anything. No, no. To Ever. this day, would yep. still be. <laughs> bro, if Arsenal win, yeah, whew, we cannot win it for another five, ten years. No, it's literally, Calm. you don't even have to win it again. <laughs> They'll right. be like, bro, we won it in that era. We won it with Paul. We won it with me. <laughs> all right. Go Rick, go, go, go win yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, bro. We, nah, we if it. Arsenal, the thing is that some people are going to be like, oh, obviously, for me, I ain't got no horse in this race should that it, or whatever they say, right? Because, look, the reality is we are from London. Mm. Whether you can say, oh, Peckham, right, you are literally a Peckham Red. Mm. That is actually hilarious. So you're a Peckham Red, isn't it? Yeah. So you know when people, you know, you've heard the term Peckham Red. No. Nah. You ain't heard that. Nah. So basically, people call Man United fans from London Peckham Reds. Mm. That is literally the tag. <laughs> I didn't know that. Them. I didn't you didn't know, know this. You are the definition of what they talk about on Twitter and shit. Yeah, mm. online, you're a Peckham Red, right? So they say, oh, Peckham Reds, Peckham Reds. But the reality is, we are all London, we are London fans. Mm. So Arsenal are ingrained in our childhood, bro. Mm. Arsenal are ingrained in our lives. So. People are obviously, maybe Mank fans and stuff are going to be thinking, obviously just want Arsenal to win the league. Mm. But it's not that way, bro. Like That's even right. Steven Housen, when I see mm. him talk, he doesn't want Arsenal winning the league. And he's a Man United fan, but he grew up as Man United and it's Arsenal. Error, right? So yeah. it's, 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 it's a complete lose-lose situation for Man United. Either, we, we're, either a record gets matched, we lose a record, or Arsenal win the damn yeah. league. So it's, 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 and you've you got to pick your poison. You can't do nothing. We've got to pick your poison. Pick your you guys, uh, second to last game of the season or third to last game of the, the season at Old Trafford. The only I hope that we can do that game. Spoil the party. Just spoil the party, just spoil man. Spoil the party. I want to ruin it. Spoil the party. I want to ruin it, but knowing United, bro, probably even give... Now, the thing probably is... Probably come with a uh, plantain for them. <laughs> you say knowing United, knowing Arsenal, the two the teams will probably will probably cook everyone, yeah, but lose to Chelsea and United. That's mm. Arsenal heritage. Mm. Mm. Where, like, they were on horrible form, but yeah. it's against us, they say, no, yeah. 
Man, I'm moonwalking at the Emirates. Yeah. That, rev. No, that, 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 we should have known. That was the beginning of the end. Yeah. For us. That was the beginning yeah, of the that end. Crop yeah, of, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. Crop yeah. Of, that crop of players were the beginning yeah. of the end of Manchester mm. United, bro. When we were... We were just goofy at them times, no, no. man. And that's what hey, we we've all been through goofy times, yeah. you know? Lacazette, like, Aubameyang. Mm, mm, mm. I'm on my blood, Clyde. Yeah. Man said... <laughs> 50, 50 and all that. <laughs> we've, yeah. been, oh my been, we've all been through it. It's scary. But anyway, guys, let us know uh, your views on our teams that we've... Um, you know, how we think City and Liverpool are going to play. Um, let us know how you feel Arsenal's going to do as well. Uh, Fred's obviously an Arsenal fan. And a big shout out to Fred as well. If you want to yes, see more of him, let us know man. in the comments. Like I said, he's, uh, all of these uh, you know, links will be in the description, in the bio, everything. Um, he's now a friend of the channel, man. Of so course. I've been Harry Panera. That's been Culture Cam. Yes. You know, friend, so turn up. Yep, Make sure yep. you like, comment, subscribe, man. My son needs help. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you guys. You're taking food out of his mouth <laughs> if you don't subscribe. See you next week. Peace.